had a goal in my mind of what I wanted to do with that and to not be able to accomplish the goal and to have it be something that was out of my control was the toughest part about it. The first time I met David Dinsmore, he was at a U.S. Nationals. He was a little kid, maybe 15, 16 years old, and he did an entry and he got all tens on the dive, one of the best dives I've ever seen. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then, you know, I, of course I met him and uh, I always had in the back of my mind, man, I'd love for that kid to come, be, uh, come to the University of Miami. I'd love to coach a kid with that kind of ability. Well, what I remember about David and our recruiting process is uh, he was this unbelievable talent. We saw a huge, huge uh, potential to become definitely one of the best divers, not only at the university level, but worldwide. What brought me to Miami the most, I mean, I always loved diving outside as a kid. Um, I always loved being outside in the sun and just being warm. I mean, I remember it was coming down to my junior, senior year of high school, and I remember walking to class, and it was like negative 30 outside, and I'm like, you know, I don't want to be part of this at all. <laughs> and then, so once Randy uh, started to recruit me a little bit, I came down, saw the campus, and um, understood what the history was at Miami and how important it was to this program, and I had to be a part of it. So fishing was always a good tool that I used to kind of get myself away from diving. Even when I lived in Ohio, that was a big thing. Also drove me to South Florida because you could fish year round, you know? And I mean, just being able to be on the water. And once I got down here and got introduced to the backcountry fishing um, in the Everglades and down in um, the Florida Keys, it just completely blew my mind to how much water there was. And it's just a never ending possibilities of what you can do. David's injury was a wrist injury, which is super important, and especially when you hit the water at 40 miles an hour off 10 meter. And uh, so there's always that unknown of, will I be able to do you know, a great entry again, which is all tower diving is about. Yeah, it's very challenging to go through injuries, especially when you first get to school, because I mean, you're, when you're just a young kid, I mean, you're getting to college, I mean, it's a whole new world. So you're just trying to get, just become a part of it and kind of manage things. And I dealt with some injuries in the past and it really made me focus on, you know, I couldn't do as much stuff in the water as I wanted to. And so I had to really make those dives count. Well, when he got back and, and he, he did his first entry into the water, and, and there was no splash at all. He and I both looked at each other and he knew that his wrist was gonna be fine and that uh, he was gonna resume his career right where he left off. I think what makes platform divers very difficult is uh, one, the degree of difficulty of some of these dives that have to be executed. You are at 10 meters, three-story level, and you really have to deal with, with fear. You have to really attack the water so it doesn't attack you, and you have to have this uh, certain bravado about you. You gotta have a little bit of crazy in you, like honestly, I mean, you're throwing yourself off a 33-foot platform into the water, you're going 30 miles an hour, you're basically hitting concrete if you hit it wrong. ACC's was pretty much my first um, time really representing Miami and I just went in there and wanted to have fun with it. You know, we were still dealing with some injuries, but we were like, you know what, let's just go out there and put a good list together and have some fun. I mean, I remember after doing my last dive, I saw that I'd gotten the pool record and that I'd won ACC's and just, I I'd, I'd felt like a sense of pride that I'd done something for the University of Miami. You know, I, I cemented myself in the history books as one of the greats in this diving program, which is what I wanted to do. To me, when, when David won the ACCs, that's just the beginning of a long story. With his ability and his talent, you know, our focus has always been on, on doing great things and winning national championships and going the Olympics and having a chance to win the Olympics. You know, that's, that's that's where his talent, you know, always has lied.
So before my last dive at um, my first NCAAs, but it was a sense of confidence that like I loved being a gamer and I loved when like the chips were down and I knew I just walked into the end of the tower and it was one of those things where like everything, the stars aligned and I knew that it was going down. It came down to the last dive and uh, David needed, to, I don't know what he needed, probably nine, so the hardest dive you can do on 10 meter. And he looked down at me and I'm, of course I was nervous and he just winked and uh, gave me that little side smile. And uh, <laughs> it made me feel good because I knew what was coming and uh, he came through. You can't really put into words how special it is to be an NCAA champion for your school. I mean, the amount of hard work that goes into it, the amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, the, the amount of support that your university gives you. I mean, they give you all the tools to be successful and it's whether or not you wanna put all those tools to, to good use. The decision to David to, to, to stop, um, it was a very hard, hard one. Just because he was uh, one of the best divers, period, out there. And uh, he probably felt that he didn't achieve all the things he wanted to achieve. The decision I made to retire was, um, it was, I never really got to have like, um, uh, sorry. Um, it's uh, like kind of like um, losing your best friend um, because just I spent every day at the pool for you know 16 years and I had a goal in my mind of what I wanted to do with that and to not be able to accomplish the goal and to have it be something that was out of my control was the toughest part about it. Like Randy always says, say la vie. And kind of take everything with a grain of salt and you take it for what it is and you know there's there's a reason why I wasn't meant to go to the Olympics and a reason why I wasn't meant to keep going but to to have had the impact that I had on the university and on USA Diving and my teammates that meant more to me than anything I accomplished in my career. Get out here in the channel, and then we'll uh, head towards Stiltsville. Sounds good. Gens, you're a captain now. I am. I haven't seen you since you're full-blown captain. How's it going? It's good, man. The captain's life is good. This is more fishing charters, man. I mean, I got my own little business. It's pretty cool. I never thought I would have my own business growing up. I still can't believe it. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Are you gonna take me fishing? Yeah, if you can ever get away from the pool. We've only been trying for a year and a half. I'm glad that he's had the success that he's had. I mean, he's been, what, like third in the world a couple of times? Twice. Yeah, yeah, twice on an individual, and, uh, yeah. Which is basically like the Olympics. Yeah, that was, just, yeah, that was it. It's just not, it's the same diver, it's just a different year. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, he, he was right on the on the cusp of being the absolute greatest. And I, I just wanted that for him because that's how good he was. And um, it's a shame that his back uh, uh, didn't allow that to happen, but, you know, He's so well-rounded and balanced. Now the guy's a fishing guy in the Keys, and you know he's going to be uh, an Olympic champion uh, fishing guy, I'm sure. 